Hey everyone, in this podcast I'm going to go over Pi2 app. Um, basically, if you ever want to get your Python external files um, into a dot application file that you can um, click, you can put on your doc. Uh, see, I have a couple here, the build calculator, and also Clavin's um, um, UI to Python converter. Um, so basically, this is... I have an application that we're going to install called Pi2 app and once we install this using the terminal um, then we can create an, ex an extra script inside of our package that we can then run with the terminal to build our system um, and to get the dot application file so it does everything automatically like it builds it for you. Um, the only problem with this is um, you will, if you have any icons, even if they're sourced properly within the script, they will be lost. However, um, in a, another series of a podcast, I'm going to go over RCC files and how to get those to um, make your icons work. All right, so let's get started. Um, if you are on Mac or even PC, if you have any I think version 2 and up for Python, pip is already installed. And basically what pip is, if we open up our terminal, uh, type in terminal, basically what pip is, is it's a terminal installer. So when you, you can install any, or actually, I don't know. So there are some things you can install, but you can install a lot of things using the pip installer. So if we type in pip, install and we do pi2 app which is the application we're going to use or it's a it's a library not an application sorry for python and if we press enter it'll go ahead collect all the data and then it'll just install usually it's pretty fast for python and um, pi side you might have to uh, it might take a little longer to install all right so now once we have pi2 app installed if we go ahead and say you already have a package, so this is my build calculator that I've been working on for an external program. So, um, oh, and if you guys don't know already, PyCharm is a free program for um, subversion systems for your Python. Um, it's really cool because you can quickly just create packages and um, inside that packages it already creates the init file. So here I'll show you. If I create a new project, and we'll call this test project and create. Uh, we'll just open it up in a new window. Inside this text project, it creates a folder on the location that you want it to go. And if we do like a new Python package, and we do this as a test package, then it'll already create our init files. And inside these init files, we can just create a Python uh, file. And we'll just call this starter file. And yeah, it'll already create the starter file, and this is where you can start doing whatever you want. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And if you press Command S, instead of saving just to a single file, it'll save to all the files within the package. So yeah, pretty neat. Um, oh, and any changes you make to the folder outside of PyCharm, it automatically updates, which is pretty cool too. All right, so say you have the package, um, you have your Qt UIs, you built them, you have everything the way you want it externally. Uh, now let's package it. So if we create a new file in here, new Python file, and we'll call this build calc build. It'll create a file. And then inside here, I already have a code for this. But basically what this code is doing is from setup import setup or from setup tools import setup, which setup tools is already um, included with the Pi2 app uh, library. Um, we run a, uh, sorry, we run a method or um, a function called setup. And inside this function, it's taking the application that you want to build. So this is kind of similar to like if you were going to, in Maya, and saying import this script, reload this script, and then that. Uh, so basically, this is doing that. Um, however, in order to uh, run a, you can't do like this script dot GUI 
um, to run a method to open up the GUI, uh, you would have to create an additional script that would automatically do that. Um, what I did to counter that is inside of my starters, I just did an if, so it would automatically run this. It's not an actual function. So if the main or if the name is main, um, basically it'll run my GUI. Uh, so that way I can just run the script without having to do all of that. Uh, and then the setup requires Pi2 app. All right, so if I just copy this and we'll just paste it over here and we save it, then this is all ready to go. We can go to the terminal, we can make this build and we can see it work. So if we go to the terminal again, and for this to work, we have to get the directory of where everything is located. So right here, this is directory, the build calc. Uh, the cool thing about PyCharm is you can right click and copy the path, which is really nice. So if we do CD, which will uh, change the directory, we can put that directory in there and then it'll, you'll know it works if it says what your the last name is right here. And so now we're actually in that folder in the terminal. So once we do that, we can start doing uh, the Py2App build. So we are doing Python and then inside Python we are, this is where you would put the file name. So we called it Bill calc build.py make sure you put the .py at the end so it knows I know it specifies here with Python but this uh, also you definitely need that it'll it'll give you an error if you don't have it and then we can do pi2 app and so basically after you do that it'll run and here is where an issue I will go if you get an issue here and it's saying um, something about pi side like if pi side is not working um, then I'll do another uh, podcast determining that because it's kind of weird. Something with PySide, um, it works within Maya, but once you do external programs, for some reason there's like your CMake's not hooked up, something with CMake, maybe you don't even have PySide. Uh, so you can all do that with um, PIP as well. So I'll go over that in another uh, series. So yeah, now we're done. Now if we go ahead and go to the finder and we look inside here, we'll see that we have two new folders, the build and the dist. So the build is everything, like all the uh, libraries that you used and stuff like that. So that's all packaged. This is what makes it what the, the, um, the executable runs off of. So this is the .app file. So if we press this, it'll open up my application. Um, so yeah, the only problem with this is it doesn't have my icons that I usually have, so that's where I'll go over RCC files and stuff like that. I still have to play around with them. I'm not entirely sure um, if they will work, but if they do, I'll make a, a podcast for that. But yeah, this all works. Um, so this is your external file. And then if you were to send this to a friend, all you would have to do is what I like, or is take this executable file and navigate outside and I usually do it where the folder is so that way they know alright so this is where everything runs to make it run and then this is the actual executable file so this we can call it bill calculator uh, in another series I'll also talk about how to place the icons it's actually very simple I use a program that will make a .incs file uh, I think that's what it's called, .incs, uh, icns, sorry, um, from an image, which is really cool. And then you can use that dot and ncns file and drag it over underneath. If I get info, I can drag it over underneath this icon right here and it'll automatically replace it. So pretty easy, pretty simple, and pretty cool. But yeah, this is how you use Pi to app and to get your external program so other people can use it in a dot application file. That way they don't have to have specific, um, um, like they don't have to have PyCharm or any subversion system to run the code. They can just easily press the dot application file and boom, everything's there. So this you can take anywhere. You can put in your applications folder. That way um, it'll show up if you go down here. See, I have another one for uh, Clavin's UI to Python. Um, converter so yeah so it's 
really cool, really fast, and uh, I guess I will see you in the next video.